How dark? I mean, the, the, the headlines in all the newspapers this morning are just utterly depressing. I mean, NHS chaos headlines we have been seeing for many years now, but this, it feels like it's got a new urgency. You know, it's, the NHS is on a knife age. I mean, how dire is the situation for the NHS at the moment? Well, just to give you one statistic, in October of this year alone, there were over 40,000 people waiting for a hospital bed 12 hours after a decision to admit them had been made. Now, those are record figures. We know that for every 80 patients waiting under those circumstances, there will be one preventable death. So we are in new territory. And, you know, people like myself, campaigners, have been warning for years now that the NHS is being deliberately defunded, restructured, and the chaos we face now is of deliberate government creation. Let's not be in any uh, illusions about what's going on here. We have the deliberate sabotaging, bringing the NHS to a point of collapse so the politicians can break our trust in the service so they can move us to an insurance-based system. I mean, what can the government do? I mean, we, we know they have, they have spoken about long-term plans, but... What can they do now? If we're talking about a knife edge with the collapse imminent, especially with the rise in, in flu and COVID admissions, what can they do right now to actually stop people, as you've just said? I mean, I think it was like um, 500, wasn't it? 500 unnecessary deaths because the NHS is not functioning well every week. So what can the government do right now to stop that happening? Well, there are pay disputes across the NHS. We have the junior doctors voting for strike action in the next few days. We have nurses voting for strike action. We have ambulance men on strike. Now, you would have thought this would be an obvious thing to sort out before to stem the hemorrhage of staff out of the NHS. So that's the first thing they could do. The next thing they could do is to allow healthcare workers who have been pushed out of the health and social care system because of their non-compliance with a COVID mandate to, 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 co to bring them back into the workforce. So we have a problem of discharging patients out of NHS hospitals into social care, so they could very instantly repair some of the damage that their policies have already done. Respect the uh, restoration of wages that NHS staff are requiring to stem the ex exodus of NHS staff. Is a lot of people who, who, who watch and listen to GB News would say that the system is broken, it's not fit for purpose anymore. Um, do you think the NHS does need a radical overhaul, not just more money slung at it? Well, it has had multiple radical uh, overhauls that have got us to this situation. We have had consecutive governments deliberately restructuring the NHS pretending as if nothing has changed. But what has, un what has undergone behind the scenes is a massive structural change which has fragmented the NHS, outsourced services, saddled it with massive debts, private finance initiative debts, and allowed the sucking away of money away from the delivery of care into profits for corporations, outsourcing corporations, debt servicing, and the cost of the failure of the outsourcing contract. So government, let me say this again, our politicians have deliberately sabotaged the NHS to bring it to this point of collapse. So they can make the argument, as you've just done, oh, maybe we need to change and rethink the model. They have sabotaged it. They have vandalized the system. That's what we need to address. Why have our politicians destroyed the NHS?